Finally, 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 reviewing the series, season one, of WandaVision from Disney Plus and Marvel. Quick disclaimers. I am not going to say that it's not perfect because it is for me. Wanda has been a very comforting character for me over the years. And while I think WandaVision is perfect, it's not free from my criticisms. But if you think WandaVision is too woke, you have two seconds to click off. Bye, thanks for watching. Yes, let's get into the most unusual couple. Starting with the individual characters of Wanda and Vision Maximoff. Or Wanda, Vision, Maximoff. I don't know exactly how the last names are worked out in their marriage. But, um, to get more into the point, I feel like episode one really cements the ideas of Wanda, Vision. Because Wanda and Vision, the lovely husband and wife, are quite intriguing. They're not exactly a usual couple seeing as they're two Avengers and they recently moved into Westview and Westview, New Jersey, a quaint little town and they're experiencing trying to fit in as Avengers in a quaint little town in the black and white era of TV and it's quite enjoyable. So now on to the commercial breaks brought to you by Stark Industries. So Firstly, I need to edit the text here, but brought to you by Stark Industries. The reason that that commercial quote-unquote break is significant is mainly because it's about Wanda's early life. The Stark Toaster 3000 or 2000, whichever one it was, whichever thousand it was, <laughs> it was actually quite a dramatic toaster to watch. You'll see why more in the later episodes that I will be reviewing if you have not seen it. Please go watch WandaVision or in some way, shape, or form that does not support Disney and find out for yourself. But to summarize, those commercial breaks are not what they seem. Especially when we get into the Hydra commercial break, which is pretty much a dead giveaway but when it comes to the Stark Toaster Stark Toaster 3000 brought to you by Stark Industries just so you know it wasn't a toaster in her childhood and yes this contains a lot of major spoilers so just keep that in mind but I thought the toaster itself looked kind of cool <laughs> like I enjoyed the use of the classic old school advertisements which I'll get into a little later. But overall, the commercials were very clever. Very gut-wrenching as they continued on, but especially with the Hydra and other commercials. But those quote-unquote commercial breaks were part of the traumatization that Wanda went through. So just keep that in mind as we carry on with each episode. And no, I will not be reviewing them all at once. I literally binge watched about six episodes of WandaVision recently on my DVD player. So, with that said, yes, I still have DVDs, say what you will. <laughs> Politely, comments are strictly moderated. But the point being is that it would kill me. <laughs> I'd be exhausted if I tried to review the entire series in one go, so that's not happening. <laughs> 
Now on to a more intriguing part of WandaVision Episode 1, near the end of the episode, when they survive their first dinner party. Interesting choice of words, huh? Well, Wanda and Vision, Maximoff, they helped secure a promotion with Vision's boss, Mr. Hart, and Mrs. Hart. Mrs. Hart played by that 70s slash 90s show. Oh my god, I can't. The mom from that 70s show. Anyway, <laughs> if you needed a reason to watch WandaVision, there you go. But, uh, the point, there y'all go. But the point is, um, that dinner party was quite something. Because Vision helped Wanda and helped his boss. <laughs> from almost choking to death in a rather mysterious and unnerving way. As it seemed like Mr. Hart was being a bit aggressive with Wanda. And so I think it was more accidental that her chaos magic was coming out. I do not think she intended to choke him with a chocolate covered strawberry. <laughs> Purely subjective opinion, mind you. But I do not think she was fully in control of her chaos magic when that happened. So... With that said, and it might be a hot take saying that, I think it was quite a brilliant dinner party. Breakfast for dinner is one of my favorite dinners, so I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> if any of you coffee meets bagel people are listening, just so you know, the way to a woman's heart is her stomach. And also through respectful, loyal monogamy, in my opinion in my belief but that's me okay anyway <laughs> but I do think Wanda and Vision are a fine pair in episode one and I really enjoyed episode one especially in a more retrospective sense like this is a more introspective and even retrospective view of watching the show so that's important to note and I also want to say there has been a really devastating loss in the anime community which seems somewhat unrelated but it's not just bear with me of the legendary Akira Tamoyami I'm sorry if I butchered his name but the creator of the original Dragon Ball unfortunately passed away this year which is not even freaking April yet but like ugh, 2024 starting anyway um, but I pray that his loved ones, his fans, me included, are able to grieve and that the legend is resting easily. Speaking of the grief, while I'm not trying to clickbait or rage bait or grief bait anybody, I want to make that clear because the loss of someone who contributed to my childhood is devastating. Like, don't get me started on Stanley's passing because, whoo, that's a tear bomb in and of itself. God rest and the man. Anyway, but let's get into how the grief is applying to my own watches of WandaVision now versus my first watch. And let's see how that connects. So the first watch was with my mom on New Year's Day 2023. Yeah. I have an upcoming video that will explain why I said heh. But um, the first watch of WandaVision episode one was quite enjoyable it was funny and dark and enjoyably twisted in its own way because there is a dark underbelly to the show if you haven't already been aware of that and my watch now now that I'm currently watching it again it feels very different like the grief feels more up front than in the first time I watched it. I mean, I was in a very different mental space and emotional space, mind you, because I'm grieving the loss of more than one person in my life. Won't get into that. Not just the creator of Dragon Ball, but I had some losses over the past couple of years, and I'm moving through them. But yeah, uh, watching WandaVision Episode 1 in this stage of my life, especially at age 27 with a lot of, maybe, with a lot of changes in my life. Part of my yawning of like, 
I've had to take a break from the binge watching because like, who emotions are real. But um, hashtag it's okay to feel emotions. But my my retrospective on WandaVision episode one is that while it is a bright, cheerful, black and white opening to the show, it is very sad. Like there's a lot of darkness hidden under it that I feel like is if you're in a if you're grieving anything you can kind of pick up on it more thoroughly than if you're in a fairly good place so I just want to say that and I'm not saying that my life is like Wanda level traumatization <laughs> at least yet but with that said here are my critiques Okay, so about that dinner party, I feel like watching it for this current time, it felt kind of, it hits different, as the kids say, but it also, the first time I saw it, it felt very elegant and humorous, and in a way it still does, but my critiques on the dinner party is that I feel like it was slightly rushed. Which I know that they have a time limit within the episodes, don't get me wrong. But it felt a little rushed. I'm like, until the, you know, whole stop it moment happened and then it felt like time was starting to freeze. <laughs> Not frozen, beginning to freeze on its own, so to speak. So that's one critique. And the other critique is that, well, I don't hate Catherine Hahn by any means. Agnes will be for another episode. And yes, let's get a little deeper into the stop it moment. Because that was something. That was very real. In the world of WandaVision, mind you. But that moment in the dinner party when Mr. Hart was nearly choking to death and Vision helped save him more or less. Well, he did save him. Anyway, when Vision saved his boss and survived the dinner party with Wanda and the guests left their home, <laughs> which was, of course, a funny moment, iconic moment, um, it felt, you could feel the darkness, but it didn't feel prominent, you know? It felt like it was just right under the surface but you could tell that as he choked on said strawberry which I'm not encouraging anybody to hurt themselves with strawberries please don't <laughs> like eat food safely that's PSA for today eat your food safely kids but uh <laughs> all jokes aside and seriously eat food carefully please um anyway <laughs> my point is is that I feel like the dinner party moment, that dark moment, it was kind of a foreshadowing. It, and in more ways than one, not just the shadowing, the use of the lighting and the color tones for the black and white usage, which I'll get into, but even though it wasn't full on heavy emotional, like it was almost satirizing the emotions of the show in a way, it felt like, like that dinner party was just scratching a surface of something very twisted. So, yeah, fun times. And while I do love the usage of many different eras of TV, especially early eras of TV within WandaVision, I also think it's kind of a flawed model to use because retro, the use of retro, should I say ism? <laughs> the use of retroism in TV, film, movies, so on and so forth can work really well. And I think in WandaVision's case, it does. Especially because there was so much love put into it. But, <laughs> it also feels, there are moments midway through the One Division series where it starts to feel a bit intentionally tacky. <laughs> but we'll get into that when we get to those Modern Family parodies. 
excuse me, satire. But I would say for WandaVision episode one, the usage of the TV eras of like the Dick Van Dyke show and other shows of the time that were made in the 30s and 40s and so on and so forth. Um, I think it worked really well, to be honest. I think the idea and the ideals, the idealistic nature of those shows really fit the theme of WandaVision Episode 1. And, again, the advertisements brought to you, emphasizing to you because, like, I didn't put it in the title. But anyway, were really fun to watch. So here are my final thoughts, retrospectively, on WandaVision Episode 1. <sighs> yes, I had to take a breath. Um, I think it was overall really enjoyable. I do think WandaVision is a perfectly flawed masterpiece, in my opinion. So there's your big spoiler. You'll probably be hearing that a lot if you watch the rest of these reviews. Which, yes, I am doing them episodically. <laughs> I could not do this all in one go, so just forgive me. <laughs> but my final thoughts for WandaVision Episode 1, in retrospect, is that it really is a fun experience, but it's also a dark one. So what are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments. Play nice and look forward to more. Hi, thanks for watching. I'm not going to talk to you about it.